Hello everybody and welcome back to the labs. I am Tausty and thank you for joining me here on another episode of Resonant Rise. All right. Having a lot of fun in this pack, doing things I've never done before. And oh boy, it's been a bit of an adventure. Last episode, we basically just played around with ancient warfare and the different things that we can do and i've got this all sorts of automated now check this out so this guy is running fine let's come down to our basement level here not really sure how i just got that but what on earth is happening <laughs> right so here's what i got going on i got sugarcane being pulled out of here by looking at the sides we can see at the bottom block side or the direction of down is queued to the top inventory and this is the top inventory it pulls down and it gives sugarcane only into this auto crafting table when the auto when it gets sugarcane it turns it into sugar and then it is pulled out and sent over to our reactant dynamos now let me just see for my OCD sake there we go um where it gives it sugar it's full of sewage it runs real nice now we might give those efficiency upgrades if augments uh, i'll look at the recipe in a little bit then we've got our um thingy bobber here full of wheat this is our breeder everything gets pulled out of the breeder and brought over to this chest which i will show you in a moment um because it's pretty awesome i'll we'll just take a quick run over here and i'll show you guys that I haven't actually had to walk back over here yet. There we go. And then we pull out of our wheat farm only from the top again. And it comes all the way over here. There we go. And the, um, this guy here gets raw beef. This is our Steve's workshop thingy that's powered solarly. Solar lily, right? That's it is powered by solar power, right? So it has a solar upgrade. I showed you guys that before, and look at all this. This is only uh, two two and a half hours since I got the automation going. Look at all that. That's excellent, isn't it? Now my sugar cane is running pessimistically low, so I'll show you guys this. It gets turned into sugar, ran robin into here. And I think I have it set up to be a blacklist where it won't allow sugar, wheat, or raw beef into the chest. So the sugar kind of has to go to these places here. I have found that for some reason, the, when I like pump it full of sugar, it seems to take a little dive. Oh no, I just figured it out. It's actually the crafting iterations of these. This is very expensive to use. Good to know. Not what I wanted. All right, so that is the farm. Now we're gonna call that a, um, a project for now. I got a couple more things I do wanna do to this. One of which is add um, grief, an XP collector so that when the mob essences are full, it collects like the XP. Um, but for now, well, we'll just we'll call that a build. I also would like to get the bound up, like the, the boundary upgrade on this so I can move it back one. And I want to do that so that I can put the fence forward and just be able to interact with this without having to worry about all these guys, right? So that'll be an interesting thing to do. But that's one thing I do want to do. And the sugarcane farm, I may expand at some point as well because it's pretty slow, but that's all right. Okay. So today I got a couple things I want to look at. The first is a quarry. I'm probably going to do most of this off camera, but it will be... Um, at least I'm going to try and make it a quarry, like just a basic quarry, which will be the, um, what do you call it? Ancient warfare quarry. So I'm going to do most of that off camera because I don't want to show all that off. You guys see me build with ancient warfare before. I've already done the research for it. That'll be easy. And then I'm maybe going to get into a bit of hydraulic craft. We'll see. Um, that is just mod I'm interested in. I don't know if I'm even at a place where I can do that yet, but we're, we're going to look at that for sure. So for now, give me a minute to build a quarry and we'll be back. Well, <clears throat> nothing quite like an overpowered accidental quarry. So 
at this current point in time, I don't have a lot of you call um, resources for transporting items. So my quarry had to be close. It's pretty darn close. Uh, so what I, I did is I put it right up against my warehouse and I put an, a warehouse interface here. The warehouse interface is what allows you to push and pull items into a warehouse using like an eye-sided kind of setup here. So I've got um, some power coming to the, the quarry from um, my single generator over there from Ender.io using some of that fancy coal that I made in an earlier episode from Calculator. Um, and uh, it so it comes right in. And then I've got this guy set up to extract and going into the, the interface. That alone won't pull the items in. For that to function, the warehouse actually needs power, constant power. To transport items around, it needs power. So let me show you something else that the warehouse can do that's pretty cool. Um, I haven't really set this up in the best way currently there's nothing in here so i might move this one over and then move the whole system over one like that so i've got one extra on the side there all right and then i'll come back here and I want to put another interface right there. So I know I said I wasn't going to do any more Ancient Warfare this episode. I just got to do one quick thing. So that's easy. I guess, oh. It's just this with a piece of paper. All right. So we'll grab, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll grab another interface and we'll put you right here for now. Now, what I'd like to do is I would like to filter out um, cobblestone. So we'll do add filter, we'll do cobble. And yeah, let's say 64. Oh, or, or zero. All right, 64, there we go. So that is in there. And then I'll take my item conduit and I'll pull you up into here. What? No, no, no. There we go. No? This. Oh. There we go. And now we're going to keep the cobble coming out of there and going into here. So that's a really neat system. It's that system that I plan to use to also do our automation for our ore processing. However, before I do that, I'll probably have to work on a few new power systems. Um, Cause that's, yeah, that's gonna be a big hole. So for right now, I'd like to see two things. One, is there a way, am I, I think I'm at a net loss there, that's good. Is there a way for me to automate the creation of this coal? Cause this coal is, fantastic and if there's not or i mean if there is should i work on that now or should i just jump into hydraulic hydraulic craft and and then the other thing i might want to do is look into uh, when i move my quarry is look into using some of the actual ancient warfare power but that'll be a different episode i think um once i get enough ore here i will probably start to kind of cook some of it up let's see so we've got some iron coming in. Once I get a bit more iron, I'm gonna try and fill this warehouse area. 
Eventually, I will build it out. Like, I'll make it bigger. Uh, or actually, I probably won't make it any bigger than that. I'll just get into Applied Energistics eventually. What? You can upgrade the quarry with, like, enchanting things. So, if you look at um, Ancient Horfair, uh, we've got these upgrades here. Basic tool quality, intermediate tool quality, advanced tool quality. And then there's also... Uh, where is it? There's another one. This is a quarry size upgrade. So this will increase the max size of the quarry that you can make. It's not even set up to the max size right now over there, actually. Hmm. There is a tool for enchantment upgrades, I thought. Perhaps that comes with the tool quality upgrades. I don't really... Oh, here they are. Highly enchanted tool and light, lightly enchanted. So you can use these. Um, I don't... Okay, so it would have to be fortune tools. But you can use these to uh, apply like a tool effect to the quarry. Um, and then you can also apply a chunk loader to the quarry. So that's pretty cool. So it'll keep itself chunk loaded. And that's, that's handy. This is easily the best early game quarry I have used like ever. Uh, it's phenomenal. This Ancient Warfare mod is a game changer for early Minecraft, early modern Minecraft. But let's just take a quick gander. Oh, it's spelled like hydraulics. I'm going to be hydraulic craft. Okay. What do we got here? Ender lolly. That seems wonderful, doesn't it? We've got some chunks. We've got some gaskets. Interesting. So maybe we look into using this to do our, our early game ore processing. Portals. They have portals. Very cool. So I think what we want to do is try to get the first generator up and running. Now, this is a hydraulic generator that I believe will generate EU. This will generate RF, and then this will generate pressure. I'm oh, this will actually pump the water. These are electric versions of that pump. And then the compressor will create pneumatic craft pressure. Okay. So what do we need for... Oh, I forgot about the harvester in, in hydraulic craft is the coolest looking thing. All right. What do I need to start my first pressure chamber? I think I need... Uh, is this lead and stone? Okay. So let me go cook up a bunch of stone, get a few things going here that I know I'm going to need. And then we'll come back and start to build things. Well, guys, we're back and it's been about a day <laughs> since the last segment, like a real day. Uh, I had a couple things come up and this is the first chance I've gotten to sort of sit back down and record. I did get a few hydraulic craft things done, so I'll show you that in a minute, but I had to go out and do some exploring because I'm in desperate need of some ender pearls. And actually, I found I was starting my explore and um, got a few blocks from my base and saw like three endermen and then I died. And when I came back, everything had despawned and there was no enemies. So that was sucked. But uh, the enderman got away, but uh, I was able to get one from an enderman. I got three ender lilies, a bunch of... Oof, loot uh, and I actually got five more ender lilies so I got eight ender lilies which is pretty awesome so that's cool um, I found uh, a place I think I might want to build my base and I, it's gonna be I think in this valley here it's kind of a cool place there's a little lighthouse like tower there or from the ruins mod um, I don't need that anymore and uh, this magical forest here is really nice some cool thumb crafty type stuff. 
But the main reason I'm here is because of this. Well, not the main reason. The main reason I brought you guys back in here is this. I got two meteors here to go check out. And I'm going to do that. I'm quite far from home. I am... This is my our base right now. So, pretty far there. Um, and I just decided to kind of come out and get take care of this. I wanted to set the quarry up somewhere else. It did finish. I'll have to show you guys a bit about the quarry that I learned. Um, it did finish, and I want to set it up somewhere like in the ocean and then have the items transported back. So, to start, though, I needed some ender pearls. I've actually got four blaze rods. I just need to make a couple ender pearls so I can make some ender chests to get the items pumped back into my warehouse for now. And then when I'm ready to move, I'll probably start a quick amount of work on AE. And that way I'll be able to, um, I might need some of this to travel across. I'll be able to move my items in storage drives instead of the warehouse containers because they don't stack or I mean they don't um, keep their items when they break so I'll have to do that so let's just hop on over here and see what I can get from this her meteors hope they're good I'm glad there was two I also checked up a, a little uh, thomcraft like thing over that way a little like altar one of those world gen structures and um, it was oh I didn't need to do that at all it was pretty cool but most of the stuff I just sort of left there for the time being because I didn't really have room for it. And I just picked up the few ender lilies I found in there. The rest of them I actually found in that like ruins hut thing, which is a pretty cool puzzle. It has a clay golem spawner. So if I need clay in the future, I think I'm going to set that thing up. Although I don't, I can't break it. Sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Oh, I don't need the... I got the space. All right. So I've taken care of that one. I got a few of these. Let's just check out what this other one is. I like the lava impact. It's pr I love that they started doing that. And just the effect that these meteors have. Although traveling over, it's a little scary sometimes. Especially when you're at the level that I'm at. Where you're not like super OP yet. But you're doing okay. You're getting there. So I did set up the hydraulic craft things there. I set up like a, a pulverizer or smelter kind of system. Not so sure how I feel about it yet. It is pretty cool. I like that I can kind of power it all with that one little like pump thing, but that's not unlike my generator system from Ender.io. I mean, I know I could have used that. I just felt like trying the hydraulic craft one. So we've got Inscriber, Calculation, Engineering, and Logic. Sweet. I'm only missing one now. And unfortunately, that one is pretty crucial to what I need to do. All right. So, probably need to find a few more of these. But for now, I'm going to head back to base. And I'll show you guys what we've got going on over there. All right. So, we are back. And here is the pneumatic craft setup I've got going on right now. I still haven't really decided if I love or hate the textures. It's just something a little off putting about them but intriguing I don't know so basically what we've got here is I have a medium pressure vat the medium pressure vat is full of water the water is being fed from below from a um, ex-utilities transfer node and then I've got this pipe here this conduit sort of converting the energy the pipe system just in case I need to run any conduits underneath here because I thought I might have had to for a minute there and then I have some medium pressure pipe a medium pressure pump which you just have to connect these two things there's no like configuring them they just work the way they're supposed to one, I'm guessing one pipe is for power and one pipe is for water or pressure and water sorry so we've got pressure built up from the heat and the water that happens in here and then you move the pressure in the water along and you create and you power these machines like that so that's nice um, they do have a really cool progress animation look at that very cool very unique um 
couple of strange things about it. The first switch that, like, uh, I think it was Yellorium and Osmium, it will, it uses another one bites the dust, so it crushes them down into these. But it doesn't have, um, the, it doesn't have it done in such a way where it can then just smelt any iteration. So basically, like, some mods, for example, Industrial Craft, you can break it down from, like, macerated to ore wash to thermal to centrifuge to furnace, and you get a larger output but at any point in that process you can smelt the product to turn it into an ingot or at least you used to be able to i kind of thought that would be the case with this but it's not you for osmium it's not for everything sorry but for so for osmium and neolorium so far you just kind of got to hold off on it so just in case we do end up needing any of this i'm gonna cook it through here and then we'll be good this system is much quicker it's also the power that runs my quarry so my quarry is done. I picked it up. Here is something to think to learn about the quarry. I went down and I blocked off a bunch of oil that was down there. Um, and then there's a bit of lava as well that I managed to turn into obsidian. So I thought the quarry was just kind of buggy where it didn't do mod items or something. And then I realized it wasn't really picking up like redstone or anything like that. So by default, even though you make it with a stone pickaxe or an iron pickaxe, it really only has the mining capability of stone. So if you can mine it with stone, then it'll pick it up. So you get a lot of just the junk, and then you get a bunch of um, iron and not a whole lot else. So I gave it an iron upgrade. If we look at Ancient Warcraft. Warfcraft? Wolf. Nice. Somebody's got to make that mod. Ancient Warfare. Sorry. Okay, we're back. We've got this here. So I put a basic tool quality in. Then it got rid of all the stuff that you could mine with iron, but left like the obsidian. So I put the intermediate tool quality in, and it could then do everything you can mine with diamond. And I under, the way I understand it is if I take these three and do this one, then it will basically get me like just a much more efficient version of this as well. Like it'll be better on energy and possibly a bit quicker. So that would be the one to build. And I highly recommend you do that like right off the bat. This is where using your diamonds like you would in a buildcraft quarry kind of come into play because this way you can mine everything but by adding this it enhances the efficiency and possibly the speed of the quarry overall it's not a slow quarry so i don't know why you would need to um and the reason i say start with this one is because you don't need to have the previous one i don't need to have this make this and put it in the quarry then this and put it in the quarry then that you just need one it pops the other one out when you're done so that would be my recommendation and you can't use them after and i don't have enough diamonds i had to make the diamond one to get the obsidian that i was going to need for that so basically um next time i run the quarry I'll, I'll make that upgrade as soon as i'm able to but for now we're looking okay for resources um not great but we're looking okay so i'm going to grab myself a chest and i'm just gonna plop the chest down here nope that's a quarry here and that will allow this i guess to pump out that's interesting so the way i have this working i didn't show you guys is around back i just have some item conduits this is fairly tedious you can only put pull out of the bottom and put into possibly the top possibly the back possibly the, i don't really know what the in limitations are yet but you can only pull out from the bottom it seems so i have it coming out of the chest from the green item conduit route going down here and into here and then coming out with brown coming up and around and going here and coming out with blue and coming up and around and going into the interface which is then putting it back into the warehouse so very cool but a little strange now i could very well go deeper into hydraulic craft i probably won't do that for my automation too much more but it's a little tedious. It's a lot of iron. It's a lot of lead. It's a, quite a bit of copper, too, if you get to the higher tier stuff. So unless I can make the bigger chamber, like I think there's a bigger pressure chamber. There's a high pressure version of this, but I think there's also a, like a pressure chamber that speeds it up. I would like to use that instead. All in all, I'm fairly limited on my power right now. Um, this is fairly good on power. 
man, why are you stuck now? Oh, it's still working. Good. This is pretty good on power. It's not amazing, but it's pretty good on, on fuel. Sorry. So I need to find myself, I believe, one more ender chest. Or one more ender pearl. Yeah, I need at least one more ender pearl. And then I think what I'm going to do is temporarily anyways, take this. If I might just make another one of these, make a generator. I've got an idea actually. Um, I'm gonna work on a few things while I wait for it to be night again and then we'll be back. Hey, and we're back and it's been a little while. I got the reclaimer on the server finally. So he's been jumping around base to base trying to move things and get some stuff done for me. So you may see his reaction pop up there or his, uh, his uh, some commands pop up from him. Uh, this, this is not loading in properly still. Okay, there we go. So we have us a quarry. <laughs> So I moved the quarry out here. This is relatively close to where my new base is going to be, which Reclaimer and I have a really cool plan for. Um, so this is the the quarry. It's pumping away. It's just running on this windmill here. This took forever to make. A couple reasons why. Um, it is a nine. You can see the the hit boxes here. It is a nine by nine thing of windmills. So if you make the windmill, which is just sticks and wool, you need five wool per windmill block. Which So I ran around shear and sheep for ages. And if you look at my shears, they're taking on quite a hit. Um, I sheared sheep for a very long time. I explored a whole heap of the map. All of this is all explored now. Um, it, was, it was a lot of sheep hunting. And so what you do is you just make the 9x9. Nine nine. It can be any size odd shape from five by five up to like 17 by 17 or something like that um and as soon as you place the last block to make that square come true it turns into this and it starts spinning then you add a um oh they're good there's no loss um you add a windmill controller and you add so this and then you start piping your power over to your quarry so here's the thing I don't know. I probably haven't done this the best way. I'm not very good with torque and things like that. So what we've got here is um, is a junction, right? Yeah, junction. Forgot about Wayla. Torque shaft, a torque junction, and a torque shaft. So the shafts are your main source of going in a straight line. Like That's what you want to use. Then there's junctions, and there's also torque distributors. I wasn't really sure which one to use. I also don't know if I make these higher and so, like this is the medium. I don't know if I make them the high ones if it'll be better. Um, I don't. I don't. I don't really know. So, um, yeah. Well, I'll figure that part out later. I might switch these out with the high tiered ones. Um, so the torque, as you can see, is coming through, and there's no loss, which is really good. There's a little bit of loss, like inherently within the cables, or I'm calling these cables the shafts. Um, but what you do is you take a junction or a distributor. Apparently those are the, these are the only two ones that can make corners. And you come down with the shafts, make another corner and come across. I basically just had to hit these with the hammer over and over until they made connections and then make sure that this was one solid connected line. If you don't, if I, I don't know if I still have my hammer on me, I do. So for example, this looks connected, right? But it's just not, like it's not connected at all. Wow, so all of these. But yeah, so as you can see, you know, this is spinning this, but then it's just not spinning. You need this to be a connected texture to make these work. Now, there may be better ways to do this. There we go. And then you obviously have a lot of like tension here. I don't know if I can change how effective this is or not. No. So you just hit with right click with your hammer on rotating mode for a while. And eventually all of this will line up. That's what I did. So the quarry will pump away. No fuel required, just this. And I've got it going to an inner chest. I added the, uh, the high bounds upgrade, if that's what it's called. Um, the, the large quarry bound upgrade, because it's really easy to make. I had no idea it was gonna be that simple. And then I also added the chunk loader, which is a bit different. You need the deluxe chunk loader just some obsidian with an ender pearl 
And then you need the quarry chunk loader upgrade, which is some iron around that. And pumped it in. So now this is this windmill is actually within the same chunk, and so is this. So it's going back to our warehouse. Whoa. That seems like a bug. Um that was weird. <clears throat> well, at least you get to see that. So they're very sensitive. You can only break them with picks. If you break them with anything else, they just disappear. So that's that. And then I upgraded the size of the warehouse back at the base. So that's what's going on right now. Um, I realize that this has been not that long so far. So I wanted to show you guys a couple things, but this probably won't be a very, very, very long episode. So the Reclaimer and I are going to start working on our new base. That means that I need to get started on a couple things. Off camera here, he's got my shovel. I'm going to do some tinkers. Um, you see him flipping back and forth in creative mode. He's just testing out what block to use for our base floor. Um, but we are, we're doing it all legit. Oh yeah. Um, because it's just more fun. And so he, uh, we're going to make a very, very cool base. We have an idea for a design. I need to get some tinkers tools up and running to make that a bit easier and to sort of stop, um, all this craziness of blocks breaking and not having silk touch anymore. Cause I miss my silk touch. Um, then, what I'm probably going to do is start the basics of applied energistics and we'll come back with uh, the basics of applied energistics figured out. So I'm going to take a quick break here and we'll come back and sum up what I've done and we'll start to work on the new base and I'll explain to you what our plan is. Explain. I don't know what word I said, what the plan is for the uh, future here of what we're going to do because it's pretty cool. All right, guys, be right back. All right, everybody, we are back here. And you may have noticed a few changes in my heart, heart, heart bar, hot bar. Quite a bit's happened actually. Um, again, it is the next real life day. So I think this day, this episode has taken place over the course of about three days. <laughs> nice. Um, it's night here. I've done a little bit of work. I got a sheep farm and I added it to this. I'm loving this farm more and more. The fact that I can just get out of my way horse. The fact that I can, oh really? I can just plop other kinds of animals in here and it'll be good to go. It's fantastic. Uh, and eventually I can make it bigger. So I just added a large bounds upgrade to this and look at the size of this thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 by 16. That's a big, so that's a chunk it'll do. That's awesome. So that, and they're really, really cheap. So I made a few of them. Um, so yeah, you may have noticed a few things different with my tools. So I was working on some tinker stuff, as I said last time. So I'll go show you my setup for that. I just went with steel for now. Nothing overly fancy, but at least if I want to, I can mine cobalt and ardite and all that stuff. Um, but let's head on over here. So I've got myself a nice sized tinkers smeltery. Now I could have made this a lot bigger. I have so many seared bricks, but I decided not to because we're going to move it soon. Um, and so this way, what I what I did is I just did this one layer. Now I realize it is a little bit big. It's one, two, three, four. It's a five by five. Um, the reason I say I can make it bigger is because of this. I have enough seared bricks to last a very, very, very long time, and that's because I accidentally shift clicked the grout making out of here and it used all of my gravel at the time to make tons of grout. So that was an accident. I've added some more warehouses, but we are full. Now there seems to be a bit of a bug. This number doesn't go any higher than 20,000. This is the max right now for the amount of warehouses we have. So I don't really know what that means exactly. I think what I should be doing at the very least right now is voiding cobble. So I'm going to get a bit of stone out if I have any. Smooth stone. I believe I need some cobble and a chest. Those are trap chest. I'm going to throw those out when I get the chance because I won't be using those. Okay. How's about some oak? Oaka? How's about some wood? Nothing. Oh yeah, and I was working on making this. So I decided to make myself an ender pouch for now. Um, and I really have no wood. All right, let me have a sleep here. 
Now you may notice a bit of like uh, what looks like maybe tick lag, but it's it's not tick lag. It is network lag. I've done a few things on the server now that I've got a reclaimer on here, and they'll be getting we'll get some other folks on here as well. I did migrate the server out of my house um, because at this point in time my upload speeds pretty crummy like it's just not that good and so I decided I had this other server hosting space so it's another four gigabyte server I'm hosting online and um, just decided to move it and it actually has made a lot of difference on the server's performance for other people especially good auto here and that's been good but for me, it's kind of downed it a little bit because it's gone from like zero latency to about 124 milliseconds, which is kind of frustrating um, at some times. So it's not horrible. I think it's actually just even tonight because last night it was not this bad when I was, did the migration. Um, but once I did the migration, it was like worlds better for uh, Reclaimer. And uh, it's not uh, a problem for me to do at all i don't mind doing it i had that server space and i was wondering what to do with it anyways so um that server space if anybody's curious is uh gg servers um cheapest minecraft hosting out there like by far and good stuff good quality because there's there's no tick lag right now um so this bottom number here, 19.85, virtually none. I just restarted the server though, so there's a couple things going on. Um, but other than that, like it's it's really not that bad. And a lot of that comes from the loaded chunks that I have right now and where what's going on in them. Particularly this animal farm is probably not great for it. But um, that's all right. So what I wanted to talk to you guys about to sort of cap off this episode and show you is just what we've been working on a little bit. Um, Reclaimer is going to help me make a cool base. I don't know how much of our play together will be recorded, if any. Um, if it is, you know, it, it may be my perspective, it may be his. But if you see, if you saw the first ever episode I uploaded, that's what we're looking at there. Um, that kind of a, a thing, except... There you go. Get a bit of a frame rate lag right now as well. It's a little abnormal for right now anyways um so we're still working on that kind of thing but we decided to go for uh, a really cool build for to do to touch on all the different areas in this mod pack we're looking at power generation uber tech magic agriculture and all of the bridging between those two railcraft and train and, and transportation systems logistical systems stuff like that uh, I am getting some mad frame rate lag right now. Can you guys see that? Yeah, 48, 53 chunk. That's horrible. Um, so I moved my ender lily farm in here because the first yield of crops came through. I melted it down in the smeltery and made it into end stone. So the other thing that happened to bounce between topic to topic here is I had a bit of a bug so you might have seen a little like structure out side the front door made of stone bricks out that way if you didn't go watch it again you do see it on camera at for a moment that is the travel portal for the Erebus mod and it is um, bugged it crashed the server because we were in the dimension and then from there because we were in the dimension um, we uh what is going on here yeah yeah like this sorry i think i actually want to put a filter on there i actually had to remove it from the pack to make like just to force our characters out of there without crashing the server what am i doing i just need one I just need one, I said. Oh, it's instantly full. <laughs> and so, once I removed it, everything was okay. What? Oh, yeah. I know what these filters are from. Let's see here. 
So that should start to go down, and we'll take care of that. We also may pull out... Oh, let me see here. But part of the problem was, you know when you when you teleport, or you do a lot on a network server that you can kind of like fall through the world, and then you appear back at the surface and you're good to go. It's just like a network lag. Uh, that happened, except instead of coming back, I died in like the void. There, I just started falling through the wor world and then died in the void. So naturally, I lost all my items. So I gave myself back my calculators, um, my these steel tools here, and the sword, which is I made an exact copy of for Reclaimer. Um, and I we had we had both just started using them, and then I lost everything so that I, from that bug. I gotta automate this for sure. Ugh. You see that bit of a? That's that's a little strange, actually. Yeah, we're back up to twenty. So it's it's not the server. It is in fact my network. Um, so I gave myself the calculators back, food, a few conduits. Um, oh, I had a chest in here, and my wrench and my transfer nodes that I had, my transfer pipe. And that was kind of it. Then I made the backpack and the new armor and everything. So what I, the whole point of us going to the Erebus dimension was because I found a cool chest plate in it and I wanted to make it. But you needed something from that dimension, I think. And so when you started to go there, it crashed. So eventually what I ended up making is um, bronze armor. And then I used my artifice enchanting to enchant it up, made a second set for the reclaimer, and now we're good to go. So these steel tools are just RF so the flux, the basic flux capacitor with uh, these two have silky jewels. That's all I had on them at the time. I'm going to upgrade them with redstone in a minute here, though. But I'll probably do that off camera. So we've got some cool ideas for builds. I know this has been kind of a weird episode. Lots of jumping. Lots of time has passed. I'm probably going to work on moving this farm now that it's, like, okay and fairly self-sufficient. Um, and once I've done that, then... We'll probably come back in the next episode and start to work on a couple of new things for me. Well, kind of new. i got to do some upgrades to power gen and things like that and start the move and uh, get a good way of tra traveling to and from our old base. My map was obviously reset because of the dimension change. Um, but this is our quarry. This is our new base. I haven't actually been there yet. I just put the waypoint down to where it was last time. And uh, I need a good way to travel there. So that's what I'm going to work on now. Uh, I don't know how long this episode ended up being. I am sorry about that. Being it, uh, that see, being that it was over three days, it you know, <laughs> kind of lost track. I can go back and watch it if it is really really short. Then I guess I would come back. But um, I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna call it here. Do a bit of work, reset my router, reset my client, figure out what's going on with all this lag, and I'll be. I thought I heard something. What was that? And then we'll jump in next time with some new stuff, probably work on inserting an upgrade of our warehouse to an AE system. All right, so until next time, guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode. I've been Tausty. If you did, leave a like or a comment or a subscribe or something like that. And hang up your lab coats on the way out, and I will see you next time. Deuces!